Hello and welcome to today's Spa Sweethearts craft video. Was there somebody else here? Well, anyway, let's get on with our craft video. We're carrying on with our lettering technique today and we are going to move on to banners. So we're going to start, um, I'm going to show you how to do the simplest banner, which I notice is at the bottom of the WI logo. So I'm going to show you that kind of thing but it's a hop and a skip to a much fancier one or an even fancier one or all kinds of different sorts of ones. And the felt tip pen box is back out again because we need to be in there. All we need for this are loads of paper. This is just plain photocopy of paper. You don't need anything fancy. We need those. We need a pencil and a ruler. We need a pen. Ooh something else here I'll come back to that later and we need a gorgeous felt tip pen stash so in here I have my felt tips and I'm just going to take a handful of colours out today because I'm moving out of my black spectrum and having some more so I'll just make myself a bit of room and I'll be back in a minute got some friends helping me here today so we're going to be learning this technique for doing this kind of banner, a nice simple one. And I'm going to show you it in stages and once you've got the hang of it, you will be able to do loads with it. Now, I would recommend that you use a pencil first and have your rubber with you so that you can adjust where you are. I'm going to go straight into felt tip pen because I've been practicing all week and I've done this quite a bit. I'll hold it up so that you can see clearly. I'm also going to use a really fat felt tip pen. Again, it's not necessarily the most ideal thing to do. I'm just gonna do it in different colors so that you can see each stage of what I've added, okay, when we're doing that. So what you're gonna start with is a simple rectangle. If you want to get out your ruler here, you can do that. I don't think we're doing, oh my goodness, one of my dolls has jumped off. Behave yourselves, girls, okay? The, um, uh, I don't think you need that because the whole point is that these are, um, ha you know, hand-drawn things. But, you know, it's up to you if you want to. Okay, now that's the outline that I'm just going to show you there. I'm swapping to a different colour so that you can see which line comes next. But it's, it's fine to do it all in one colour. Halfway along this side, the short side, you're going to draw a line outwards. And then imagine it's coming through here. And do it again on that side. Okay, so they're your first two lines. You've got that one there, and you've got that one there. Approximately halfway coming out. You can decide, you'll see at the end, what you want to do with that. So I'm choosing a contrasting colour here now for you to see. And the next line we are going to do is we are going to do a V. Now, when I started doing these, your V's can go either way, can't they? So you might need to just practice around and keep pausing and looking and thinking which way. The end point of this V needs to be coming about one centimetre further than the bottom. So it's coming out a little bit like that. So again, you might want to practice a little bit so that you can just be absolutely sure that you have got that coming down where you want it to. Remember, I practiced these a long time. I've been drawing these. So if you make mistakes and have to do this several times, that's absolutely fine. You don't need the whole giant piece of paper either. I'm just doing that for you. You could fit lots of them on. You can see this one. I have lots on here to show as well. Okay, our next line is now going to be coming about one centimetre in from there. We're going to draw this a line and stop like that. That's about one centimetre there for that one. But basically, it the measurements don't matter, you're coming a little way into your banner. This is like the ribbon bit at the bottom, so you're coming a little way in like that. And this is the magic -y bit, this bit really, the next bit. So what can I do that's a nice different colour for you? I'll do orange. Okay, so now we need, oh no, orange isn't a good one actually, because I think for you that's going to look really, really similar. I'll go on to black. Okay, so we're going to go up and join that in a straight line like that. Nearly there, but it's not quite the magic bit because the last bit is that we are going to do. Now, I've got this one upside down, so I'm just going to do it so that I can be absolutely certain that I am going the right way. From here, we are going to go like that 
and from here we are going to go like that so we're joining the bottom corner of the oblong to the bottom of that one the bottom corner to the oblong and we are going to color that in now i'm just doing it stripey to show you but you can also color it in completely and there you have the basic banner now as i say don't worry about making getting those like that you will need to practice that with your pencil several times having a go okay now i have also just drawn that out for you the one that i was looking at if i just take that away in the different stages so oh that's it's upside down we don't starting with that adding the lines adding the v adding the bottom up and on in each stage like that so again you could pause and free fr freeze frame that bit if you're that kind of visual learner i am okay so you could see that now it looks good if you turn it upside down and do it the other way around so i showed you that one where our ribbons are like that you could do it the other way how did you do that you did it by turning your piece of paper upside down <laughs> so you just end up with the opposite way around you can draw it the other way too and work that out but the easiest way is just to learn that one and then flip it upside down so it looks really good with both of them now the next alternative is to give yourself a curve when you're doing that so i'm going to just show you that so doing the same kind of way Instead of starting with an oblong as we did, we're going to start with a rainbowy kind of shape. And another one. We're going to join that together and it's up to you how you want that to look like that. We're still going halfway down. Halfway down and making our V. Joining it up and doing that magic little join when I first started doing this, the which way round, the bit that makes it look really good and folded over, I did have that pointing the wrong way and that kind of thing. So you just need a little bit of practice for that. Now, if you then add a different colour inside, that gives it another little extra edge. So I'm doing a really contrasting colour here. I actually really hate purple and orange together. And I realise I just picked up the orange felt tip pen. So I don't like this. I should have picked up the turquoise because orange and pur turquoise is a way nicer combination. Um, but hopefully you're going to be able to see that. Director, can you see those colours nicely? Yeah, fantastic. So you end up with like a little bit extra there. There's a, another one here that's got those careful sorts of lines on. What are you gonna do with it when you've got it? You can do this as a date on the top of things if you were writing something. So perhaps you were inviting somebody to um, a Christmas party. I think I will have to actually, to do my writing, just take that off a minute and hold it down and go back up again. So you might decide to, I've done this at the top of my bullet journal. If you don't know what a bullet journal is, you can look that one up, I won't do that color. I will do. So I have written something like 18th to the 24th of May across to make a nice banner at the top of something that I'm doing. Okay, so you can have a whole list. You could do it that way. Something nice to do is if you are having a, um, a party, it was my birthday last year, if you're having a party, you might want to invite people by saying whatever age you wanted i was 50 last year so that is the sort of thing you can put at the top of your hand drawn um invitations to people because you could have that like that a slight extra variation is to give yourself another level so that you've got your ribbon going along like that so that's exactly the same only keeping the first one straight and then doing that again maybe that's going off the edge for you i'll just move that so if i leave that there again you could zoom in on that 
And my final one that I'm going to show you is the one where we had three. Oh, what have I done with that one? Going back to the beginning is this one. So I'll show you that. Now, to do that one, I'm going to turn my pieces of paper the other way up. And I'll show you with my big felt tip pen again. So, oh, that's not a clean piece of paper. We don't want to be doing that. Right. So we are going to have three oblongs in a row. And obviously, this same technique would work for having ten oblongs in a row. Whatever you want. Now, your top and bottom one are going to be the same. So we are doing, and I'm going to go upwards with this one. We're going to do that thing that was just the same. Now, if I'm imagining this is coming round like this, I need to think about um, which end it's going to end up on, which will be the opposite one. And then you need to think about them going through. So we're gonna join this one to this one, like that. And then this one to this one like that. I'm joining from that end to halfway along, from that end to halfway along, that end to halfway along, that end to halfway along. Get your pencil and mark approximately halfway if that helps, if you're not happy with doing that confidently. And then you can do your um, darker things for your back ribbon here to show that that's where it's going. And you could do that for lots of them and you can wiggle them around and make them a bit less square if you want to. A friend of mine is getting married soon and she's been asking me to do some crafts. You could do something like that and write your names on there. You could have that for the top of your um, seating plan or things like that. Looks good, but why don't you improve it even more and make it look even more amazing? by adding that kind of thing. Tomorrow at the Zoom, I'm going to go through how to do this curlier one and how to embellish it. And next week, we'll learn this lettering technique. So that's loads of things to still come. Tomorrow we will be learning that one. Now, the only other thing I wanted to show you on this side was a very similar thing, which is using these circular ones, which are wreaths. Okay, what could I use to draw around to get a circle? I wonder, a coaster. So I've drawn around my coaster like that, except I've done that the wrong way up really. I've drawn around my coaster like that in pencil and then added these little decorations. And again, you can put a lettering thingy here. The one I showed you at the end of um, last week's video was this one, which is really useful for scrapbooking. You draw around your circle and then put your banner inside and do some lettering like that. So that's another idea. But this slightly curvier one is what we will go through tomorrow. So I will show you both this one and the flowery one at the live Zoom if you wanted to join us. And next week we will get to the crescendo of our lettering when I show you some lovely br brush lettering. Get your felt tip pens out and I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for next week's Spa Sweethearts craft video.